welcome from Jean Kwan in New York City. I am with the Greenberg School of Risk Management of St. John's University in Manhattan. This school is, say, formerly known as the College of Insurance. I'd like to thank Nick and Nicholas, and others in the organizing team for the kind invitation to this forum. I also say the kind understanding from you all that I am giving my presentation in a pre-recorded manner. I'd like to share the next 15 minutes or so to share my idea about the resilience and innovation in insurance markets at times of crisis, particularly the crisis that we are going through this year and probably during the early part of next year. I also spent a bit of time to talk about a few alternatives to a traditional insurance market that we are using and we are creating to better serve the customers and all of the stakeholders and to improve the efficiency of the insurance companies and the market. They are about insurance linked securitization, insure tech, and parametric insurance. It is obvious that the pandemic affects the social and economic well being of people and businesses across almost all jurisdictions. The insurance market is also affected, but not to the level of the concern that many expressed on the onset of the pandemic, that's particularly the early part of this year. Why? It is because insurance is designed to absorb the shocks, although not immediately, from the catastrophes that it covers. The pandemic is somewhat on the say, verge of covered and not covered, but it is clearly a case when that the insurance companies must cover when they have promised that they would cover as stated in the policy. As you all know well, the damage has been done to the insurance industry and we are in the stage of, say, recovery, albeit slowly. This graph by Google data shows that insurance is still performing less in terms of the market value than what it was enjoying at the beginning of this year. Its performance is close to the performance of banking and payments but better than travel and tourism and oil and gas. In contrast, there are at least three industries which are performing better in both sides of the coin. They perform better than what they used to be at the beginning of the year. And they are performing many other industries, certainly including the insurance industry this moment. Nonetheless, we are expecting that the insurance industry will recover soon, it is hoped. This graph that I borrow from SMP shows that the performance of the insurance industry, of course, in terms of equity value of the market, is performing slightly better than the banking industry. As of December 7th, the insurance index is around 94, 95 percentage level say, of the, the level we enjoyed at the beginning of this year. In contrast, banking, the banking industry is experiencing about 88 percent. Please note that this is basically about the U.S. data, not thus necessarily about the global data. We remain less active 
socially and economic activity wise. Also, we are experiencing economic recession in many corners around the world. So the global insurance market is expected to experience, say, a negative growth in premium revenues in 2020. The figure here shows that the life market is affecting more than the non-life market. Economic development-wise, we are expecting that advanced economies are going to be experiencing, say, more shrinkage than the demand developing and emerging economies. Worldwide, we're expecting about 6% decrease in premium growth in 2020 for the life sector, almost none for the non-life sector. For total market, we're expecting roughly about 3% reduction in premium revenues. The impact of the COVID-19 comes out in the form of a reduction in premium revenues. Also comes out in the form of a rise in claims payments in COVID-19 related and other say, uh, losses. Accordingly, we are going to experience the market insurance and reinsurance hardening into 2021. We need to wait and see, but it is hoped that when 2022 comes, the market softens again. We all in insurance never stay passive when we are affected by a catastrophe. In this period, insurance companies stay active in providing coverage when their policies state that, for example, COVID-19 related losses are covered. Of course, when it is, it is stated clearly that it's not covered, then insurance companies will make their point clear to their clients that they are not responsible for such a losses, such a loss. Around March, April, there was some political pressure, which was in fact rising around the time, such that they were going to create a new bill that would enforce insurance companies to provide business interruption losses, regardless of the exclusion of such coverage from their insurance policies. What they did understand then was the risk that such a retrospective application of coverage would not only say wipe out all the capitals the insurance market had, it would also make the even the return or survival of the insurance very important, very difficult because the such a law was literally asking the insurance insurance industry to support to to cut that to cover the losses and business losses of the economy. Insurance is never designed to never designed to insure the economy. The insurance industry is designed to provide financial protections for the members of the economy for the risks that they could measure and calculate. The insurance industry thus is trying its best to make all the coverages at least COVID-19 compliant by, remo by removing any gray areas of coverage. Concurrently, the industry is doing its best to find solutions and breakthroughs to improve the service. 
data analytics, blockchains, and all the insured tech are used, being designed, being experimented to improve the operational and financial efficiency of the companies and the market. We are also seeing say, a rise of an alternative to traditional insurance, that is parametric insurance, as well as say an increased consumption of insurance linked securitization so that the market will remain say, more capable of providing coverages to the members of the society and the economic community that it serves. The insurance industry being affected by COVID-19 risk is going to experience some, say, negative impact on the functional areas from product development to marketing and distribution underwriting, claims management, and customer services. Long-term perspective-wise, however, we are expecting a positive impact because the insurance industry remains responsive, remains active in finding, say, more efficient and new solutions. Thus, long-term perspective-wise, we are seeing some positive impact of COVID-19 for the furtherance of the insurance operations and service to society and economy, particularly in the claims management area. From now on, allow me to talk briefly about the alternatives to traditional insurance, beginning with insurance-linked securitization markets. This segment has been used since the early 1990s. As you can see from the figure, the growth has been gradual. And in recent years, we are seeing a relatively, say, relative surge in the uh, say, say money capital available say through the insurance-linked securitization um, approaches. For example, for the specialty life and mortgage and et cetera segment of the uh, market, we are seeing the, the fund available, the total coverage available from 448 million in 2018 to 761 million in 2020. Briefly mentioning, there was um, a temporary I'm say, shrinkage of the investment in insure, into insurance insure tech market during the first and second quarters of 2020. In, two, in quarter three of the year, we are seeing a surge again, uh, probably at a record say, breaking level with $2.5 billion of infusion of funds for 104 deals. We are still, say, going to see, it is expected another, say, um, say rise in the final quarter of 2020. Thus, this development in the, say, say funding growth is signaling that, signaling that insurance industry and insurance companies are very much interested in, say, improving their operations and functions technology-wise. Finally, I've been observing a rise in the government's and commercial insurers' interest in parametric insurance, not only for asset protection, but also, in fact, increasingly for revenue protection. Parametric insurance, simply speaking, offers a predetermined payout upon the covered loss event being triggered. And the payment is automatically by a predetermined index or model-based parameter. Parametric insurance must be transparent and third-party verif 
have, must have a third party verifiable parameter and use frequency based pricing model. And as I said again, it is increasingly for revenue protection. The bank used this more in form of, let's say, cap bond, and the policy was triggered in March. And we are going, to, we are seeing again a lot of increase um, in the interest in this parametric insurance by intergovernmental, government, and say uh, commercial entities as well as commercial insurance companies. In sum, man-made threats can affect the market performance. Natural catastrophes and pandemics may cause a disturbance to the insurance market. But the insurance industry is built upon to withstand, although with some dents occasional, all the challenges for the long-term protection of the society and the economic community it lives with. The insurance industry continues to remain resilient. It must be resilient. Otherwise, the entire society and economy could be at risk. Thank you again for your kind understanding. Thank you for listening to this presentation. I wish you all the best. Be safe.